What is up YouTube, Remington James here, and today's video is gonna be a little different than previous videos, but I think those of you that are interested in this topic will really enjoy it. What I've done is I put together a little learning experience thing that I'm gonna go through with you guys and show you the most optimal way to train and to diet in order to put on good quality muscle. If either one of those for you is lacking, then you're probably leaving some gains on the table. So I'm gonna quit talking right now, I'm gonna get right down to business. If you guys are ready to see the most optimal way to diet and train in order to put on some good quality, boom, <laughs> muscle, then I'm ready to break it down for you step by step. Let's do it! And here we go. As you can see, I have titled this How to Put on Muscle 101. And we've split this into two parts. We have the training aspect and the diet aspect. Now, each one of these can work by themselves, but you're not going to get the full benefit of either if you're not combining the two. So I'm going to start off with training first, and then we will transition into the more important part, which is going to be the diet. But like I said, they both play a key role in putting on good quality muscle. And this applies both male and females, by the way. So and no one is excluded here. So let's get started with the training aspect. You want to make sure with your training that you are doing hypertrophy training, and that's between 8 to 12 reps a set, focusing on volume as opposed to strength training. I have outlined here, you see, I put the adaptation principle. What that means is your body is a direct reflection of the environment that it's in. If you look all around the world, different cultures have different genetics and different physical attributes based simply upon their environment and the stresses that specific and unique environment puts on them. So our unique stressor in our environment is going to be the gym. We are putting that stress upon our body to get the desired result out of it. Your body has no choice but to adapt to a situation if you put the necessary amount of stress on it. So that's why hypertrophy training is prioritized over strength training because the rest time is shorter and you're putting constant stress on your muscles which in turn will cause them to grow and adapt at a faster rate than just simply strength training which is heavier sets of one to three reps doesn't quite have the same level of impact and as you can see here I outlined the purpose of training is you are imposing self-selected stress to shape your body into the desired shape the true power of training is your body's fight for survival so kind of like I just outlined a little bit in the previous bullet point but your body is a direct reflection of these stresses you're putting on it. So for instance, you see a guy with big shoulders, more than likely he's hitting shoulders twice a week. That's kind of what I decided. You know, I found some weak points and that's the whole thing with bodybuilding is your overall goal is to make everything look as aesthetically pleasing to the eye as possible. And in order for that to happen, you have to have everything balanced out. So in CERN, when it comes to shoulders, I realized mine were a lacking point for a long time. Two times a week, hitting them, throwing in extra exercises here and there, and boom, my shoulders have caught up to the rest of my body. Now I probably have other lagging parts, but that is a, a topic for another discussion. But basically, Basically, you put the stress where you want to grow. So if you have a weak chest, you double up on that. If you have weak legs, you double up on that. And then as far as the desired weight goes, I get this question a lot. People are like, how much weight should I use? So what I always recommend is you want to stick between 70 to 85% of your one rep max for at least 24 to 48 reps in total per exercise. This can be split up in any type of way you want to. For instance, I usually do four sets of 12, which adds up to 48 reps per exercise. But some people, if you're just beginning, you know, maybe three sets of eight will suffice and then you can increase it as you move along. So I would recommend testing your one rep max or at least having a rough idea, you know? So just figure out what your one rep max is or at least get a ballpark estimate of it and then go from there. You wanna make sure your reps are challenging and I always tell people if you're working out, right, and you hit your 12th rep and it was it was easy and you don't feel any sort of pain or resistance and whatever muscle you're working out, then you wanna up that weight. Your final couple reps should be tough. Maybe not on the first set, maybe not on the second set, but by the end of it, it should be a struggle. Your body grows through resistance. So the more resistance you put on it, the better results you're going to get. Ultimately, I used to be someone that went through the motions a lot, but once I figured out that you really have to go in there and squeeze and hurt and break it down, that's when I noticed a lot of my gains really started happening. And the difference here with rest times between standard strength training and hypertrophy training, there's less rest time. So your basic hypertrophy program will usually have you resting between 30 to 60 seconds between a set, whereas 60 seconds might be more saved for something like deadlifts, something like squats, whereas 30 seconds if you're hitting arms or chest or something like that, less rest time is a little more applicable. Whereas if you look at a strength trainer, a lot of times they'll hit a heavy set of deadlifts and they'll take a three to five minute break. We want to make sure we're keeping that constant stress on the muscles in order for them to grow. Now, what I recommend here is that you are training at least three times a week, hitting all of your body parts. So a three times weekly split might look something like 
back and chest one day, arms and shoulders on another day, and then legs, lower body on another day. I, I personally prefer my clients when I'm working with them, they do at least five times a week, which I think is the sweet spot. But then someone like me, I'm a little more advanced. I've been doing this for a while. I usually do about six times a week doing cardio all those days. If you follow me for long enough, you kind of get an idea of what my schedule is like. And then I forgot here, almost forgot to mention, don't neglect legs. So basically just make sure you're not missing out on any body parts. I know sometimes it's hard to want to train those legs and it's hard to want to train your abs and maybe, you know, forearms. Forearms are probably my weak spot when it comes to remembering to even train them, even though you're getting some stimulation there with other workouts. Hitting all your body parts is ideal, guys. Your body grows best as a whole when it sees that unique stress is being placed on all aspects of it, as opposed to someone that just wants to do bicep curls or, you know, tricep push downs. So keep in mind, guys, your whole body needs to be worked out. And then the final point I have here under training is rest. Don't neglect taking some R&R &R time while ensuring you're getting adequate sleep because you grow up while you sleep. And this is something I had to teach myself. I was trying to lift seven days a week, not really taking any days off, but I found that I was kind of at a standstill. I felt run down all the time. I was tired. I was exhausted. And I realized that uh, I needed more sleep and I needed a rest day. So now I do six times a week. I train that one day is a rest day. I'm still doing some cardio because as you guys know, I'm pretty sedentary. That rest day is way more beneficial than you realize. Now, I don't recommend, I had someone ask me this the other day. So I figured it's a good time to touch on it a little bit. I don't recommend taking your rest day on your cheat day. You always want to make sure you're getting a very good lift in on a cheat day. If you are on a diet that includes a cheat day or cheat meal, I hate the word cheat day because that means a whole day, but a cheat meal, you want to make sure you're getting your workout in on that day. But take your rest day, stick to your calorie goals or whatever your meal plan entails and go from there. And don't neglect your sleep, guys. Far too many people are getting six hours, five hours of sleep and thinking they're doing good. But when you optimize that sleep and you get a minimum of eight hours and you wake up feeling rested and ready to tackle the day, that is a game changer, not only in your physique, but with your just mental well-being, your overall positivity, your happiness and everything. So don't neglect that. Okay, guys, now we are moving on to the diet aspect of this program. So pay extra attention here because this is going to be the most important part. So let's get down to business. Your body is a machine that constantly reinvents itself. Tissues break down and rebuild with new tissue created from the food you consume and other recycled tissues. This process is always happening. You are a different person tomorrow than you were today on a cellular level. Your body is constantly recycling tissues, building new stuff, and you have to think about it, right? If you're putting crap in your body, you're going to be rebuilt with crap. If you give your body the adequate tools it needs to grow, it's going to utilize them effectively. So keep that in mind, guys. The food you eat is literally fuel for your body. So what you're putting in there is a direct reflection of what you get out. So keep that in mind, guys, as I move through this. Now, workouts cause the protein in your muscle to break down and repair at a faster rate than they would through normal everyday living. I felt like this was a good thing to touch on here because even just having a higher protein diet in general without any training, and I, I speak about this a lot, but protein is thermogenic in and of itself and it's also anabolic. So even just eating more protein in the absence of working out will cause you to build more muscle and burn more fat than you otherwise would without a high protein diet. So the importance of protein is definitely warranted here. And I'm just trying to stress that to you guys. Protein is essential, especially when your ultimate goal is to be a lean, mean, flexing <laughs> machine. And now I kind of touched on this a little bit just now, but protein by itself is anabolic. Protein wants to be stored in the muscles. So I recommend you aim for a minimum, an absolute minimum, if your goal is to put on muscle of 0.75 grams of protein per pound of body weight. So a 190 pound individual should consume 142.5 grams of protein a day, minimum. In my personal experience, at least one gram to 1.25 grams is the sweet spot. If you don't have that protein, your body simply can't build muscle no matter how much resistance you're putting on it. So make sure you're getting in that protein. And I've listed here some ideal protein sources. So we can get protein from sources like steak, eggs, lean ground beef, chicken, lean ground turkey, cod, tilapia, whey protein, isolate, low fetch, cottage cheese, ETC, etc. And I wanted to point out whey protein isolate in particular, right? I was actually doing a client's meal plan earlier today and he recommended a brand. I want to say it was a muscle tech, 100% whey or some, something like that. And I looked it up. This protein was primarily a concentrate blend, which meant that it was about the lowest quality of protein you can have, had a ton of added carbs and sugar that's not needed. And it just simply wasn't a good quality source. And a lot of these sources aren't giving you 100% of the protein they advertise. So I recommend getting yourself a good protein isolate source. If you look at the ingredients, typically it'll say protein blend on the back and there will be a parenthesis bar. It should always say whey protein isolate first, unless you're buying a casein blend. If it doesn't say that first, I don't think it's worth its weight, even if you got a really good deal on it. So just keep that in mind, guys. There's more protein sources than this, obviously, but I just labeled some real quick so you'd have a good idea of some protein sources you could utilize. And now I recommend on a bulk in order to put on muscle, you're aiming for 
at least 60 grams of fat from healthy sources, such as coconut or olive oil. You have nuts, nut butters, so your peanut and almond butter. Shout out to my almond butter fanatics out there. I see you. Hit that like button if you're a peanut butter, almond butter fiend like me. We have uh, avocado, omega-3 sources, so like salmon, and then whole eggs, etc. So focusing on getting some healthy fats from those, you'll get some fats in some of your beef, which isn't necessarily the healthiest fat in the world. I, I'm not a huge proponent of these people saying that you just can't have red meat ever. I don't think we evolved as a species to not consume red meat. I think having red meat's not a bad thing necessarily, but you want to make sure you're getting some of the fats from these healthier sources. So moving on to the next page, I've outlined a diet rich in complex carbohydrates is also essential. Micronutrients in fiber are your best friend. Sweet potatoes, brown rice, beans, quinoa, whole wheat bread, and bagels, etc. All those are great sources, but they aren't your only sources. Now, what I mean by this is I love sweet potatoes personally. Some people hate them. I don't mind brown rice, but I prefer white rice. And white rice and white potato have almost no fiber, don't have many micronutrients at all in them. You're leaving a lot on the table by going with those. But those are totally fine because macronutriently, other than the fiber, they're pretty similar to their counterparts. So brown rice to white or sweet potato to white potato for macronutrient wise. So if say you eat white potato in place of sweet potato or white rice in place of brown rice, that's not going to affect your gains at all as long as you're getting your micronutrients from another source. So as long as you're eating your fruits and vegetables in abundance, then you should be totally fine in that regard. People to say you can only eat brown rice or only eat sweet potatoes aren't really looking at the bigger picture. The bigger picture is making sure you're micronutrient dense. And if you're only eating white rice and chicken and no veggies, then yeah, you're probably lacking somewhere. Or if you're not taking a multivitamin, then you're probably lacking somewhere. But if everything else in your diet's fine, you can omit those. You might just need a fiber supplement if you're not eating enough veggies. So keep that in mind, guys. <laughs> Speaking of keeping in mind, my final little point here on that, keep in mind that many micronutrients are only available in certain fruits and veggies. So don't neglect them either. Broccoli, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, spinach, kale, peppers, berries, apples, bananas, etc. I have some clients that don't want to eat any vegetables at all. And I understand that some people are going to have that issue. I don't understand it because I think vegetables are great, but I can sympathize. There's some things I simply won't eat. You won't catch me eating coleslaw. You know, I hate bananas. I wouldn't share a room at a hotel with a banana. <laughs> <laughs> if that's the case, guys, what I'm going to recommend you do, I don't think if you're not eating vegetables today, just a simple multivitamin is enough. I think you should probably supplement with a green superfood powder. And those are available. You can find them at a Subzilla location near you. I know Subzilla carries Cyto Greens, which is probably my favorite brand. But if you don't have a Subzilla location near you where you can swing in and grab one, I recommend going to Amazon, eBay. You can find some good green superfood blends. And all it is, a little powder you put in a water bottle, drink it real fast, and uh, boom, it gives you the micronutrients you need, a little bit of fiber without having to choke down any of these veggies. Basically what they do is take these vegetables, break them down into a fine powder and make them easily consumable. Now, I don't care who you are and no matter how much you hate vegetables, you can take a little bit of powder, put it in a little glass, shot glass, you know, boom, drink it real fast and uh, you can get that down, guys. If, if you're serious about this, you're gonna be able to do that, I guarantee it. Okay, guys, and then moving on to the conclusion. So I wanted to cover a couple little things here that I felt like were worth mentioning here in the final closing parts of this video. So so I think I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but in reality, either of these two, your diet or your training will only do so much by themselves. Implementing both of them is the key to making maximum gains. And that's kind of what I touched on earlier, guys. These have a very synergistic relationship. You can only do so much with one and only so much with the other. But when you combine the two and you marry them, you will notice exponentially greater gains in overall muscle growth. Just keep that in mind, guys. Like I said, I never noticed my body transform the way it has in the last year two years until I really implemented all aspects, the training and the diet into my routine. Now, another important point here I want to touch on that I already touched on a little bit earlier, but I want to make sure I hit this nail on the head. Don't neglect rest. Your body grows while you sleep and muscle tissues are repaired. A little analogy here. You can't run a car at full speed without stopping for gas and the occasional oil change. So your body is meant to rest and you need to have that rest, guys, because your body grows when you sleep. If you're going too hard, too often, your body is not adequately repairing itself. Your workouts suck suffer your mental well-being suffers, everything tends to suffer. So I touched on this earlier, so I'm not gonna go too in depth right now, but I think you guys get the point. Make sure you're sleeping good. And a couple sleeping tips, if you guys wanna see a video on what I personally do to help with my sleep, as far as supplementation, what my little nightly routine, what I do with like my cell phone, and what I do with the TV, and what I do with my curtains, and everything, I have a full routine I have to help me get a better night's sleep. If you guys would be interested in seeing that video, comment below right now with that, and if enough people wanna see it, I will do it. Moving on, now, the amount of food you eat will vary depending on 
your current stats. So what I recommend guys is watching my video on how to calculate your macros. I know I made one for fat loss a few days ago or like a week ago or something. And I have other ones on my channel on how to calculate your macros. What I'll do is I'll find one and put it in the description box below if you want to go ahead and watch that. But find your macros, then I recommend using 300 to 500 calories above your total daily energy expenditure and then adjust accordingly as you watch your weight fluctuate. So if you want to do a nice, steady, lean bulk, the ultimate goal should be to gain a pound to two a week because any more than that, you're going to start putting on unnecessary fat. But a pound to two a week is a good goal. And then if you find yourself at a point where you've gained a little too much weight, you can cut back down. Your body is not going to grow as efficiently as it could in a caloric deficit as it will in a surplus. So you want to focus on this while you're bulking. You want to have more calories than you need. And as you look right below here, the house analogy I have, that's all I have put there. And the way I like to describe bulking, right, and training and all that, is that if you look at your body like a house, and you want to build a new addition onto that house. Let's say you want to put a porch on the back of it or whatever. You can sit there and have a hammer and bang away at it, but nothing's going to happen if you don't have the raw materials to actually build that addition. So that's kind of where it comes into training with no diet, right? If you're training, you're sitting there just banging that hammer away and you're hitting your reps and you're working out, but you have no raw materials there to actually build your muscle and for your body to utilize for repair and for growth, then you're not really doing anything. So that's why you might see some of these guys that are killing in the gym, but they're not making any gains. These are the same guys you're seeing driving through McDonald's and swinging by your local pizza joint and not necessarily following any sort of regimen. So if you're serious about this whole lifestyle, the fitness and the bodybuilding and putting on some muscle and all that, then you really need to make sure your diet is in check. And it's not even just the fact that you eat clean to build this muscle, just everything, just as far as your energy levels. The biggest thing I see when I sign up new 12 week clients on my program after the first four weeks and we do our full check-in where they fill out the question they let me know what changes they've noticed, we reevaluate and do everything. The biggest change everybody says that I see the most often is increased energy levels. And that in and of itself, guys, is almost worth it without even having the muscle gain. Think about how many times you're sitting there on the couch. And, you know, you want to go do something, you want to do this, but you're just like, man, I am way too tired for that. That will tend to go away if you start following a healthy diet. So keep that in mind, guys. Even if you don't lift, diet is so essential. And then now, as I'm coming down here, I'm hoping you guys could see all this as I, uh, as I went down. I don't think I lowered this enough for you guys to see it on the screen. But if not, I apologize. Okay. When we come down here, what you need to understand about building muscle is that changes don't happen overnight. This is a long game, but the results pay off over time. Slow and steady wins the race. And that is true, guys. I've been at this now for around four years, I would say. I didn't really get the results I wanted right away. But the longer you do this, those results are cumulative. And you will notice as time goes on that you're slowly getting bigger, steadily getting leaner and all that. Now, you can notice changes happen pretty quickly, though. Like if you start following something like this, I would say it takes about two two weeks to notice noticeable changes. If you are the type though that you haven't really dieted and you are just starting all this for the first time, then you might notice changes even in that first week. But understand significant changes, like big changes in muscle mass, those take time. Just know that patience pays off and slowly steady grind and day in and day out. That's what this lifestyle is all about, guys. It's one of those things where I don't even consider this work at all. Going to the gym is just part of how I live my life. Eating clean is just part of how I live my life. And you guys know I have the occasional cheat meals. I'm actually gonna finish this up and I think the uh, Chipotle challenge ended up winning the little tally, but I'm going to go eat probably five Chipotle burritos. I don't know. I think that sounds like a good number. You can have your fun. You can find a delicate balance and uh, may just make it a lifestyle, guys. That is key. So scrolling down here now, a couple little points. If you are having trouble eating all of your meals, don't be afraid to utilize a mass gainer or a blender to create your own mass building shakes. So I seem to have some clients that simply cannot stomach food. You guys watched my video yesterday. You've seen that I ate my entire meal plan in like 15 minutes, right? I've always been an eater and that's been kind of like a weakness and a strength for me when it comes to putting on muscle i have no problem getting all the food down i need to but when it comes to eating clean i find myself hungrier and hungrier and hungrier because like i'm the type of person i crave a lot of food at once some people just can't really stomach all this food so what i recommend if you can't there's a variety of good mass building supplements out there in the form of mass building protein shakes blends and stuff like that you just want to make sure once again that you're eating a good quality brand that's not fully loaded with sugar and the macros are good for what your current goals are optimum nutrition is always a good brand that I recommend and there's other brands that have mass building shakes as well and mass building powders I recommend like I said if you're close to a subzilla go in there because even if you don't buy anything they're extremely knowledgeable and they will give you the heads up and the rundown you need on whatever supplements you're looking for but if you can't make your way into one I know optimum nutrition is one that I usually recommend for clients that I think it's called serious mass maybe or something along those lines is what their supplements called but optimum nutrition makes a really good one or you can create your own mass building shakes which may be the best option if you're just trying to save a little bit of money throw some oatmeal 
oatmeal, some peanut butter, some protein powder, standard protein powder in a blender and boom, you can mix it all up and uh, drink it. Okay, and uh, another video idea. If you guys wanna see me make an ultimate mass building shake, comment below. I'll do that video too, guys. I'm full of ideas. So anyways, guys, as you can see here, we are at the end of this and uh, my final point is thank you for watching my video. Hit that like button if you'd like more content like this where I go in and kind of do a learning experience where I kind of break down maybe a specific topic. We just kind of talk about it for a little bit because these are easy for me to make and I feel like um, as a personal trainer, as a diet nutrition coach, this is, I'm in my element right here, right? I, me talking and me relaying information and me teaching you guys stuff is what I do this for ultimately. And if I can even change one person's life, if someone watches this video and they go, holy crap, it's that easy. And they, and they start implementing these practices and they can lose weight and get happier, more confident and healthier than, uh, guys, my, my mission is accomplished. So like I said, hit the like button if you like this style of video and hit that like button for the 103rd video in a row, guys. This is the 103rd video in a row. So the streak continues. And as always, as you see there, thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to transition to my other camera and I will see you guys off. And there we go, guys. That wraps up this learning experience video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I love doing these guys. It's really in my element. I love talking. Talking is probably one of my favorite things to do. And if I can talk and teach and, uh, you know, it's as a trainer, that's just, that's just my bread and butter. So anyways, guys, that's going to wrap this uh, video up. I actually wanted to talk to you real fast. I have another idea for a video. I know I can keep saying comment below for this video comment below for this video but this is one I posted on Facebook and a lot of people said they wanted to see it and I'm curious those of you that uh, are watching this right now if you'd like to see it too making a video on how I make my YouTube videos right and what I would do is I would go over my equipment such as this camera uh, some of the other equipment I use my tripods I would go over my editing software how I get in the zone to uh, make a video the creative process and all that so if you'd like to see that video once again comment below guys uh, I apologize for asking you to comment below so much I just like your feedback guys I try to do everything on this channel for you guys because you guys are the ones that uh, watch the videos hit the like button subscribe I'm just here making the content so ultimately this is tailored for you guys but I just looked at the time on this video this is gonna be a long one so I'm gonna go ahead and call this off right now I gotta still go to the gym train and then it's eating challenge time so thank you guys so much for watching as always and you ready for it don't forget to smile remain positive and pay someone a compliment because you never know whose day you could be making better with that I am out here this has been a Remington James production and I'll see you guys at the next video. See you guys.